What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and we're here to kick off your week with another great top 10 back issues for you to be on the lookout for, right, Jack? That's right. We've got mini series. We've got original graphic novels. We've got cheap dollar bin fodder. We've got sleepers galore. This is not the hot list. This is not the top list. This is a list of books that you should be on the lookout for. These are books that we think are going to be rising in the coming future. These are books that we think have an eye for that long-term success. Yeah, I love it because we put the list out, the little graphic out each and every week on Instagram and people reply, man, I only got one, I only got two. That's great. That's the whole purpose of this list is to give you nice, affordable books to be on the lookout for. This isn't one to check off and go, man, I got all these great books. This is a hunt list where you go yes. and pick up some of these great back issues. We're going to get into it right now, starting with number 10. Coming this week at number 10. We have mask preview issues. We all know mask is on the horizon. We all know that movie is going to be made at some time. We all know about that all spark verse, that transformer GI Joe, that Hasbro verse, but either way, mask in its own right is a great book, but there was also some books back in the day that had previews. Just like we talked about strange Academy last week, mask has some books that are similar, right? Right. And this is the thing we, as the comic community have to decide what is the standard because you look at ASM 365, the first appearance of Spider-Man 2099. That is unquestioned, right? But that is a preview just the same as those Strange Academy previews. You look at DC Comics Presents 26. That is a preview of Teen Titans number one. It is not some other story. Um, yet those books are looked at as the first appearance. And I think the only reason why the Strange Academy number one and these various mask preview issues um, are not looked at as true first appearances is the fact that there's a number of them. Yeah. But I look at it like variant covers. Yes, there's a large print run, but they're not all the same. Now, it's tough when you're talking about books from this era. You can look at like what, when books were released, but they all kind of came out in the same month. Um, they were all, there's definitely staggered weeks, but that's kind of tough to tell. But you're looking at some big titles like Superman versus some uh, small titles where you know that the print run was probably drastically different. Um, so I would look towards that as well as if you can get your hands on newsstands. Uh, Especially that Blue Devil issue. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. You look at like if you can find like a Blue Devil newsstand, uh, you know, you, then, you're, then you're cutting that print run down so much. And the simple act, I've been saying – for years since I wrote an article on comic book invest that John Cena is one of the main characters in mask in the Bumblebee movie quote me on. It. And just recently he posted uh, a, a random picture of mask on his Instagram that prompted a key collector alert. Uh, and I promise you it is not random that this has been happening and this is going down. So, this is something to pay attention to. So these are all, all these mass preview books, dollar books, $2, $3. They are cheap. So do some research, do some homework, figure out which ones you think are the best plays. Look for those newsstands. But either way, I would honestly buy any of these for a dollar. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, I think another reason why some people look, I won't say frown upon them, but they're not as highly sought after as some other books like you talked about at the beginning of this pick is there's also kind of, a lot of publishers were doing this a lot of their books at that time as well. Like I know Marvel was doing it, did it with Masses of the Universe, a bunch of previews and a bunch of their books as well. But buy what you like. That's what we always say. And if Mass is something you're interested in, we just want to make you, the viewer, aware, hey, there's previews that have actual story in these other issues. Yeah, especially since Mass number one has seen spikes in the last couple of months. So this could be a great alternative investment. Then hitting the spot at number nine this week, we got Lando Double or Nothing number one, but not just any. We're talking about those movie variants, right? That's right. Now, usually photo variants, I would dismiss immediately. But we've seen it hit one time before with that Chris Hemsworth um, when he had the haircut. And Scarlett the Johansson, Black Widow. That's true. That is true. Um, so it, it has happened before. Um, it's difficult. It doesn't happen often. There has to usually be a reason why. But I believe that this Lando series on Disney Plus is going to be a smash hit. I, I bet I'll go all in on that. And if you look at Lando, we talked about Star Wars 43 last week, we, the first appearance of Lando in comics in general. What a steal. 
but that's starting to take off. Now you say, well, well, where else do you go? These actually depict the actor as Lando. They show him right there. These are inexpensive. Under I call them Childish Gambino covers. Yeah, Childish Gambino right there. The real hip hop variants. Um, you know, they're, they're it's about $5 books in most cases. I think if you can pick these up, these have a chance to get popular if that show has a similar popularity to what we've seen from, uh, you know, The Mandalorian. I would also look out just on a side note that Lando number one, the original series uh, that came before Double or Nothing, where there were like one in 50 variants that were absolutely gorgeous. And Alex Ross, uh, there's an amazing Jet Magazine homage, totally slept on. Be on the lookout for those books too. And number eight, we're going to talk about a book that a lot of people go searching for. A lot of times they search for those variants, but they overlook the fact that Flashpoint number five, in its own right, is still a great book to add to the collection. Yeah, because everyone's looking for the variants because they're paying attention to the Flashpoint part, right? And we know a Flashpoint movie is coming. And we also know, like, there's some validity with these future Batman stories now because we also know Batman Beyond is coming. But you know why I like this book, Brian? Pandora. Because we also know that she has become a part of Justice League Dark. And Justice League Dark is coming to HBO Max. And I think because of that reason, this, this book right here is a slept on book. Because it plays in two worlds. It's a popular book for the events that occur within the story, um, within Flashpoint. Uh, the, the epic battle with Flash and Reverse Flash and Thomas Wayne. But at the same time, you're getting a first appearance of a character that really has a lot of potential, but hasn't fleshed out all the way yet and still has a lot of room to grow. This is a book that's gotten hot before. It's really dropped off, not, not being paid attention to, and especially that cover A, like you mentioned, everybody looks for those, that black and white or the, uh, the, the Thomas Wayne variant. Uh, I like that cover A as a slept on book. It's a book that I regularly find in dollar bins. You said Pandora. I thought you were talking about like charms for women's bracelets. <laughs> we're talking about that Star Wars Jango Fett number one graphic novel. That's right. Now, here's the thing. We know Boba Fett, been red hot, looks like he's only going to get hotter as he now moves as a character onto Disney+. Plus. We've seen with the Mandalorian and everything that goes on with the bounty hunters within uh, the Star Wars universe, how hot that's been. We've seen in the publishing side from Marvel what Bounty Hunter stuff has done, what variants have done. And I think we're only just getting started. With that in mind, Jango Fett, if you notice what Marvel's done, there's been a lot of Jango Fett comics being produced recently. And that really makes me say that there's something there. And there's a lot of room for Jango Fett to grow. But there is certainly a first appearance debate with this one, Brian. There's some comic politics that come in really kind of depends on what you're feeling on a first appearance is, is. And our longstanding opinion is when you get into one of these debates, especially a debate like this where both options are affordable, I say go both. You know, you kind of can't go wrong. So you mentioned we're sitting at the number seven spot. We're going to talk about that Django Fett number one, 2002 original graphic novel, which is the first time Django Fett was ever introduced in any sort of comic. Um, it was made by Dark Horse Comics. It's a first appearance as true as it gets, except for the fact that it's not in a monthly comic. It comes in the graphic novel. Now, some people do not consider that a first appearance. And if you're in that boat, well, then you should get excited because then the first appearance is Star Wars Episode Two, Number One a movie that most people hate and a comic that really doesn't sell at all. That book is readily available. Most wiki sources online listed as Jango Fett's number of first appearance. I'm really surprised that it hasn't at least become a book worth stocking up for just in case, um, especially that cover a really doesn't sell for anything. I think that this is one of those ones where it's like, I look at it like a lottery ticket that if they're going to continue to push down the Star Wars universe, it's only a matter of time before Django gets involved in the whole ordeal. And you can get that graphic novel for 15 to $20. You can get the uh, episode two, number one, like a cover a for cover price. So these are books I would both be on the lookout for. And that's why they are number seven and number six entry.
We are midway through the list and then hitting that number five. It's not too often we talk about a whole series in this list, but we are talking about that DC Futures End, right? Yeah, and we're talking about an entire series because you can buy this series for less than it costs for a lot of books. I'll say even kind of the average book on this list. I have regularly seen this set sell for less than a dollar a book. I have seen it sell bundled all over the place and with very little interest. Well, it got it got pretty panned. I mean, a yeah, lot of people well, didn't like it. It got panned also. It started out hot. It got hot early on with the Green Arrow death and the Fire Star story. And, and then it, where it fizzled is that at that time, DC was obsessed with these weekly stories they gave us batman eternal and then they gave us futures end and both resulted in the same thing they would start out and we would all love them this is great and then we eternal did, had some great alex garner covers but you would get tired of buying this book <laughs> it week. wasn't any cheaper yeah eight eight weeks into this thing you're like okay and once you started hitting those issues that were like all right not a whole lot happened here and i'm still spending this money every single week um, there weren't variant covers beyond issue number one. So it wasn't like there was anything really flippable. You were buying this just to read and then put together in a set. Most of us bought our reader copy and kept it. C covers were everywhere. They were plentiful. So the, this was and has been eternal dollar bin fodder all over conventions forever. You, If you spend more than Cheap bundles. Dollar, yeah. Buy cheap. I would say buy cheap set. But if you want to have some fun, put this set together, but don't spend over a dollar a book. And you can do that. Um, and here's why this set may have some value. Um, because I think it's a victim of all of those things we talked about. It's a victim of being a weekly series at a time where there was two weekly series back to back. DC basically asked us for two straight years to give them an extra $3 a week on top of everything else we were already buying. Um, and yes, it, it pat, petered out in the middle, and then it got hot at the end. What did it get hot at the end? Well, the transition of Batman Beyond from Terry McGinnis to Tim Drake, the death of Batman Beyond uh, around that 46, 47, 48 uh, issue started to get hot again. So we saw this, and now you have to look at where we are. Where the writer, James Tynan, is the hottest writer maybe in comics, but definitely within DC Comics, writing the Batman story that is anchoring everything DC is doing. This is his story. And this is one of those things where I think this story, I think uh, Batman Eternal, I think these are going to be stories that people are going to pay attention to. You also have the fact that we know that we're going to see some Batman Beyond stuff happening on TV or in movies. Uh, this is certainly a storyline that they can play into. Uh, especially the later parts with the transition. And then look at all the controversy that's going on with Tim Drake and Terry McGinnis. I find this really interesting um, because it makes me wonder this was at one point a hot back issue when that transition of Batman Beyond happened. I wonder if that's still valid or still relevant or still something that people are going to pay attention to. Or is it something that's maybe more valid or relevant now? But either way, this is a cheap buy and something that I think has some potential in the long term i think it's also a great pick because some people might be watching going oh man that that series sucked but you just brought up a bunch of good points about how it's on the periphery of stuff that's buzzing about it's on the periphery of yeah. batman beyond it's on the you're talking about future movies and we know that trend we always talk about trends on this list look what people are doing now something gets hot they go out and buy everything around it hip-hop right. cover gets hot everyone goes out and buys every hip-hop cover and every hip-hop cover is that's on the secondary market Get in now. We always say it's a lottery ticket. If you can't afford a risk of a dollar, an issue, then fine, don't buy it. Buy what you like. We always say that. But at the same time, for a dollar, it's worth the pickup. Coming in at number four, we get that Transformers more than meets the eye, number 26. Yeah, and it's not often that we're talking about a modern Transformers issue or a modern Transformers first appearance, but this one is extremely unique. Now, it's not the first female Transformers character, but it is the first female Transformers character that is created by Transformers fans. This was part of a fan vote uh, to create Windblade. And 
this isn't something that was just a gimmick or a cash grab. This character has turned into an absolute fan favorite. She's gotten her own miniseries. There's toys. She's been a part of uh, television shows and movies. Windblade is clearly here to stay and, and definitely, I think, a mainstay of Transformers at this point. And we've seen that reflected in that retailer incentive for this issue, regularly selling for $150 to $180. I give you pause for a second to drive that in for a second because I, I mean that $150 to $180 for this one in 10. Transformers fans know about this issue. But what is being slipped on is the, the, the cover A or cover B. Now I get it. The retailer incentive is the rarer one. And Windblade's on the cover. Has everything you want. But this is a character, I think, that has really long-term appeal within the Transformers universe. We've seen what has happened with female characters, how important that is to bring females into these various genres. The cover cover price for a cover A for a book where the incentive goes for $150 is criminal. Do not let these sit in back issue bins at your LCS. If you can find this book for $10 or under, I think it is a great buy. To me, this is a, a Jenica of Transformers. Um, and on top of it, the best part is, aside from the whole female angle, it was created by fans so this is a character that naturally fans love so you don't have to guess if this character is going to be a fan favorite you already know that it is we're taking all the way back to the first issue of that idw teenage mutant ninja turtles series that's right and we're doing it for two different reasons number one because the reader buzz on this series is crazy we're over 100 issues this series is becoming iconic at this point, to me, IDW is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is the home of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes, those original comics were amazing, but this is really where TMNT grew and became what it is. And I think that these number one issues, while they've certainly spiked, you're looking at back issues that'll sell for anywhere from forty to seventy dollars each. There's a, a one turtle per cover. Uh, you, you have the different variant covers. Um, We've seen them regularly get hot before and spike a lot of late printings, but I think they're still criminally undervalued because that's TMNT number one. You're not going to be able to afford that. You're looking at a $2,000 book at this point. Um, and that's in your dog ate it condition. So this is really the modern generation's TMNT number one. On top of it, where you look where the series is going, you could argue that the relevance is maybe even more important. Yes, the nostalgia and history is there for volume one, but the relevance to what's going on now is with this number one. And here's another unique addition. If you read the City at War storyline and you're reading the comic now, you know that one of the biggest villains, if not the biggest villain, was Old Hob. And Old Hob has had his hands in everything going on in TMNT. It seems like he's going to have his hands going in a lot of things going forward. Well, Old Hob makes his first appearance right here in TMNT number one. And I haven't heard anybody talk about that. I think that's slept on. It's overlooked. There are a lot of great characters that were created in the early days of TMNT at IDW who are now being used in the comics in prevalent roles. So I would pay attention to this. You heard us talk about this with Alopex's first appearance in that TMNT micro series, Raphael number one. I think this falls into that category. On top of it, it hits that classic is classic that we've talked about. And on top of it, it hits that great secondary option when that first option, that first print, first series is priced out of your price range. And that's at the number two spot. This is one of the books that spiked before, especially with the old Spider-Verse movie. But now is a great time to pick it up again and add it to your collection. We're talking about that Marvel Tales number one that has a pretty good first appearance in it, especially with 80s kids and nostalgia. But now with Spider-Verse, even today's kids are enjoying this character, right? That's right. And look, I can make you short-term money or I can make you long-term money with this one. The short-term is John Mulaney's Spider-Ham was amazing in the Into the Spider-Verse movie. And we know he's going to be back with the sequel. This book was selling for double what it's selling for today when that movie was out because of all the merchandise, the way that the character was popular with kids. Spider-Ham was popular with your kids, Brian. Spider-Ham was popular with my kids. And now you're talking about, if you guys aren't familiar, Brian has two boys. I have two girls, same ages. But... Different genders still reacted the exact same way to the same character. So to me, that makes me sit there and go, this character is a big hit, and this is one we need to be paying attention to. Well, 
why that gets me even more excited is we've heard all of these reports about where we're going in the MCU long term, that we're going to get to a Spider-Verse live action, right? So now I sit here and go, as our kids grow up, and in a few years when they're in their early teenage years and that Spider-Verse live action hits and it's a nostalgia play for them now because they watch this cartoon as a kid and we've already seen what Rocket Raccoon can be. Why can't Spider-Ham be that same thing? Because of that, I say, hey, look, you can double your money in the short term. But in the long term, this may be a major key that people are looking at. It's just a funny character from a kid's movie. You may be looking at the first appearance of Rocket Raccoon. And if you think about Rocket's first appearance in Hulk and you think about Marvel Tales number one, you're looking at two vastly different books. This is a book I would really pay attention to. Uh, it's been a cult classic for a long time, but I think it book has a great chance of becoming a mainstream key within comics. You may laugh, but hey, who thought a, a raccoon was going to be one of the most popular characters or a tree? within the MCU. Yeah, if they do have a live action movie, I wonder how they're gonna get a pig in a Spider-Man costume. But if they go the mocap route, my vote is for Andy Serkis, of course, because he always kills mocap. But I want John Mulaney voicing the character. Yes, I agree with that. So we are now down to that top spot, that number one spot, and coming at number one this week on the list, we are talking about that Justice League annual number one from 2019. This is one right here, Brian, where we have to follow the money because DC Comics has backed Scott Snyder and his creations the whole way. And this one is one of his big creations, Perpetua. We saw Perpetua at the headline of everything year of the villain this year. And I think that this character is still really being slept on on the secondary market. Part yeah, of that is it's also front and center. That name's front and center in death metal right now. Right. That's what I'm saying. Is And I can't figure out why people aren't going crazy on the back issue market for this character. Um, and I, it seems like a slow burn for Perpetua to become like a really big deal. Let's face it. She is billed as like a bigger entity than Batman Who Laughs. And we already see what Batman Who Laughs is doing. Um, so because of that, I really don't understand why the first appearance isn't popping off. Now, there's some confusions. Because online wikis will do that to you. So if you search, you will find some sources that will say Justice League number eight. Now, great book, awesome Jim Lee Joker cover, and one that I do think is worth picking up if you're into Perpetual. But what it's really referring to here is a, a Batman who laughs in captivity saying that Perpetual is coming um, and really just alerting everyone to who Perpetual is. Perpetua doesn't really make her first full appearance until this book. So Justice League Annual number one, I think, is the book to pay attention to. Now, we've talked about annuals. They get slept on. They get underordered. They don't have the sexy variants, so they don't tend to be the ones picked up on. Um, this is a book that's gotten hot before. It was a $15 to $20 book because of the character. And then things happen, delays in publishing, and suddenly – Nobody's really talking Perpetua, even though, as you mentioned, Brian, everybody in DC Comics is talking Perpetua. So it's only a matter of time. So that's the point of this show. We want to get you ahead of the curve. And that's why this book hits the top spot. And if you're going to argue this book and you want Justice League 8, you know what? Put that book in the top spot. It doesn't matter. Either one, I think that it's time to get behind Perpetua while you still can, because this is a character that has a chance to really be a big bad in the DC universe. Yeah, you'll hear people just League gate, but you also hear the annual. There's a lot of people, like you said, shows up in the annual. But like you also just said, if you really want it, just buy both. And it's a great book. And we've even said it, I think, a couple of videos ago about how Perpetual, we see her playing a big role, has already played a big role, and that name rings out, especially within that DC yes. universe right now. What do they need to do? Add her in Joker War for people to take notice? But either way... Number one this week. And that also wraps up our top 10 back issues for this week. That's right, Brian. Not only is it going to wrap up this week's list, but that means that there's only one more list 
till we're done with the second volume of a hundred back issues that you should be looking for right now. And that means that we are going to have another great ebook hitting simplementscomics.com very soon. So be on the lookout for that. We told you these lists are ever growing and we are going to keep releasing these ebooks as resources for you. But Brian, that's not the only thing hitting simplementscomics.com very soon. No, we also have a Power Rangers Draken New Dawn number one exclusive variant limited to 500 copies by power artist Steve Morris, Draken and all that armor, gorgeous cover. It's available right now on supermanscomics.com as well as the 616comics.com. So make sure you guys head over there, get your pre-orders in and be on the lookout for that volume two of that ebook of over 100 back issues to be on the lookout for. This is Brian Jack for Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thinking you got me right where you want me. I tell a ghost just duck duh. Sending them shots, we send them back. Young ain't really about that. Run, it's always bounce back. Need more hands just to count down. Stay on my belly, I need me more breeze just so we can get the team right.